Yeah, I know it is a, it's a huge commitment when you become a Christian. It means a lot of different things. Since Jesus died for me, so I would commit my life to Him, that I would live for Him. So we, out of a decision of our will, choose to believe in Him and trust in Him. Believing in Christ is, is more than an emotional decision. You have to understand, you have to make a logical choice as well to believe in Christ. It's not always about feelings. It's good to, to feel good about it. That sometimes you're not going to have those um, mountaintop experiences and you're not going to always feel like God's presence, but you just have to trust and know that He's always there. So that sums it all up. Becoming a Christian requires three things. It's a decision that we make with our intellect, our emotions, and our will. It's a commitment of everything we are to the one who gave his life for us. You know, Kevin, I was listening to you talk, and I kind of think that it's like getting married. Now follow me on this. <laughs> Suppose that you meet someone who's really attractive, they have a great personality, and a lot of other wonderful qualities. But those things alone, would they be enough to marry that person? No, because there's more to marriage than mutual respect and admiration. Exactly. Now let's suppose that you keep getting to know each other and you fall in love. You may be so close emotionally at that point that you already kind of feel like you're married. But are you? No, because there's more to marriage than what you think or feel about somebody. That's right. Now let's suppose that you're going to make it official. You get engaged and the wedding day finally arrives. Now, intellectually, you believe that your fiancé is the most wonderful person in the whole world. Emotionally, your heart beats twice as fast when you're together. But now, as you stand in front of the minister or priest to say your vows, something even more important is going to occur, because in that moment, you two will commit your wills to each other. And that's what happens when you become a Christian. You commit yourself to Jesus Christ 100% in your intellect, your emotions, and your will. So suppose that a person does make this threefold commitment to Christ. Is there anything that gives that person absolute confirmation as to their salvation? You may say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and died for my sins. Am I not a Christian? You are not if you have refused to surrender your will to Him. Or you may say, I heard a wonderful sermon, my emotions were stirred, and I had a great emotional, spiritual experience. I even responded to the invitation to go forward for counsel. Am I not a Christian? You are not if you have never relinquished the throne of your life, your will, to Christ. How then can you be sure that you are a Christian? Is there not some kind of confirmation that God gives those who sincerely receive Christ? I believe there is a threefold confirmation that Jesus Christ is in our lives. Confirmation number one, the promises of God's Word. God's Word is one way to know you are now a Christian. The promise of God's Word, not your feelings, is your authority. His Word is totally reliable. 1 John 5, 11 and 12 confirms that Christ is in your life if you received Him. This is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. John 1, 12 and 13 echoes this promise. To all who received Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Confirmation number two, the assurance of the Holy Spirit. A second source of confirmation is the inner assurance of the Holy Spirit who lives within every believer. The Apostle Paul writes, The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Confirmation number three, the changes in your life. A third way to know you are a Christian is by changes in your life. 
Your changed life is a witness to the fact that you are a Christian. Paul records, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun.